What's up everyone? Welcome to the Durbin Compound. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Devin Durbin. I'm here to bring you the tools, tips, and tricks to make you more self-sufficient. So in today's video, we're going over the uh, W205C300 uh, alternator change. So I'll be the first to admit that this video didn't turn out anywhere like I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be a lot better, but um, you know what? I just have to post the content because it will help somebody out in um, changing their alternator themselves. It's a pretty straightforward process, so don't be intimidated by it. If you need to change your alternator, you have any questions, just let me know in the comments of this video and I will try to help you out the best I can. But uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Stay tuned. All right, I'm gonna explain a couple things that you need to do before uh, changing your alternator here. Uh, you need to remove this upper intercooler pipe. So it has this little, uh, it has this rubber coupling on it or you know radiator hose um, for this side where it attaches to the intercooler. And then you have a little spring clamp here to take off this barb here. So you wanna, then there's a 5 16 uh, 6.5 sixteenths bolt that attaches that uh, pressure connection where you have the o-ring so pop this out before you do any of this because the alternator is going to have to come out right through here so I've already done this uh, or already removed the alternator it took me about an hour never done it before um, so it's not all that difficult it's just a matter of trying to get in everywhere to get it out so there's another hose in here I'm, I'm going to change a camera view Okay, so here is a P-clamp that goes uh, basically right here in the middle of the engine and holds this, holds this coolant hose that comes up to your uh, water-to-air intercooler. There's a, a stud here where it attaches. You'll want to disconnect this so you can push it up out of the way to allow the uh, alternator to go down into this space. So I've just taken off the serpentine belt. You can kind of see it down here. Uh, but we are going to put the alternator back in here and then I'm going to show you in reverse how it goes so that you can uh, see exactly how I did it and in the order that I did it. Uh, we'll just do it reverse so that I know this method works when instructing you guys. I assume that you already have your new alternator in your hand uh, before you're taking out the old one, but you have a stud on the back here and you have a connector. So uh, the way the connector is designed is you need to pull out the little plastic piece on it. Um, I'll roll in a little bit of a different connector here, but you pull out the plastic piece. And then um, I took a flathead screwdriver and pried uh, right between the body of the alternator and the plug to pop it off. So that's going to be the first thing that we do once we get the alternator kind of in its spot, but it's gonna be turned at an angle. So uh, once I get it down in here and get it into its spot, uh, I'm gonna show you exactly how it needs to be oriented to do that. So I am gonna grab it here by the big, uh, you know, by the big uh, bracket mount here. Okay, and I'm gonna drop it straight down in this hole here, right in front of your oil filter, or your oil, oil filter housing. So that is the best way that I've uh, come up with, is kind of slide it down past these lines. You do not need to disconnect anything um, other than what I already showed you. So you don't need to disconnect your coolant lines. Um, you don't need to disconnect uh, the inner cooler this literally will fit down in here uh, past your fan shroud. You just need to have a little bit of finesse here and wiggle it down past the plastic on the fan shroud. <clears throat> you might get it the first time, you might fight with it for a minute, but once you get it down past this fan, fan plastic, you'll be in good shape. So yeah, all right, now down past the plastic hard line that I showed you that had the P-clamp on it. Now, you can take a break and let it sit on the bottom there, or you can put it up into its spot here beside the motor. So I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna get some more light in here. I'll show you where I have the alternator and just where it goes. 
All right, so keep in mind I'm working around a light. Um, I'm also working around trying to get you the best view possible here. Um, but in essence, this is probably the best I'm gonna be able to do with the camera angle. So the little Molex connector here, um, this guy right here, I don't know if you can see that very well, hopefully. Um, maybe I'll put a little bit more light on it here. Uh, okay, this connector right here, Try to get a better light, ah, ah, whatever. I'm trying to get it in camera here. There's this little gray plastic uh, uh, piece on the back of it. So uh, I'll show you a close up so that you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, you're going to have to put this or take this off of the alternator why it's still in place, but with it um, kind of halfway in its position. So I'll roll in some still shots here so that you get a good idea of what I'm talking about. But you wanna put the alternator um, about halfway into its spot here, and then you're gonna put that connector on. So uh, you have to get it about halfway in there, um, and then it will allow you to have enough slack on that connector to get it plugged in. Um, but what I'll do is I'll roll in some, some still shots because that's probably going to be the best way that I'm going to be able to explain it. <clears throat> because I also have to work and you're bent over the car and well, it's not the easiest way to show you. So I'm going to go ahead and plop the alternator up into its spot here. Past these coolant lines. Remember, you do not need to take them out. Um, it will go on past. Just be careful. Once you've got it past the, the last coolant line here, that's when you'll connect your connector. So I'm gonna reach past with my left arm. So um, I'm basically uh, in between the alternator and the engine um, in through here. And what happens is I will, I will basically take my left hand and I will grab that connector and then it will snap onto the connector on the bottom of the back of the alternator. And you'll hear it click in. Make sure it's all the way seated. Now once it's seated all the way, you can look at it from over this line here. You can look down in at it. Um, I'm right here on the back of the alternator. So maybe a little bit better light over here if I was like this. All right, trying to stay out of the camera, but yeah, there's your connector on the back of the alternator. You see where I am? Connector on the back of the alternator, okay? Once I plug it in. This is my stud here. This, this uh, threaded post you see here is the, uh, is the battery terminal connection. So um, trying to do my best to get you guys a view, but the alternator's not all the way in. See, it's kind of cocked out sideways. Um, that's when you connect your connector. Pop it on and then push the little gray piece back into place to lock it. Okay, and we're done there. Now, we're gonna grab our lead, our battery lead back here, and we are going to line it up as we put the alternator in further. So we can just start popping it back here all the way and then grab your lead and put it on the post. Now this is a little tricky, but now that I've popped it up in far enough, I can see that the alternator's still out of place, still considerably out of place, but the lead is on the back of the alternator right here. Try to take you guys some good still shots here so that you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, not all that great, but um, that bolt or that nut for that stud is a 13 millimeter. So what you need to do is you need to set up a small ratchet, a quarter inch ratchet with a 13 millimeter socket on it. All right, if I can find where my quarter inch ratchet went, it's probably in the most obvious place. Oh, here it is, <laughs> okay. 
So what I did was set up a 13 millimeter deep well socket and a quarter inch wrench. Now we're gonna go in behind the alternator to the left and then between the alternator and the block and then onto the post. We're gonna thread our nut on first, arm between the, the engine and the alternator, reach around, put the nut on with your left hand Get it as far as you can. It's a nylon lock nut, so you're not only you're not gonna be able to get it very far. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Beep. Okay, righty tighty, lefty loosey. You're gonna take this ratchet in your hand like this, serve it behind the alternator right where you put that nut. You're gonna come across here and onto your nut from behind. My head's probably in the way. It is what it is. Okay, you might need to finagle it a little bit in order to get your ratchet on the bolt. Once you've got the ratchet on the bolt, go ahead and start tightening it down. And you have enough room to swing this, swing this uh, ratchet behind this alternator. So these are your, gonna be your hardest connections here. Unbolting the alternator is pretty easy. Um, and getting it up out of there is pretty easy. These are the most difficult things because, well, you can barely see it and you kind of need to go by feel. So, I mean, you'll get the hang of it. Let's get this bad boy tightened down here. Need to make sure that I put the right alternator back in. Okay, the alternator on the bench is dirty. This one's clean. Okay, snug it down pretty good. I mean, you're not gonna be able to get a lot of torque on it. Just snug it down good, okay? And pull the ratchet back out from underneath it. Okay, at this point, we're ready to set the alternator in its spot and rotate it down in. Now, I chose to take the idler pulley off this um, just to make it easy. It is what it is. You can do it without the alt or with, uh, if you don't take the idler pulley off of the alternator, you will fight with that thing uh, being cumbersome when it's when you're trying to bring it out. So we're gonna fight around here, try to get this bad boy into place here. Close, close, and just rock it back down into where the holes are. These bolts are long, five sixteen or. Uh, a three-eighths a three-eighths six point will take off these bolts there's only two bolts and then there's the idler that goes on it the idler is also three-eighths bolt and you take the idler off so um, once you take off the two bolts and the idler you'll see exactly how the alternator just slides up out of place and those two connections on your on the back are going to take you a little while but once you get the hang of it, you saw I put it back together in a couple minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this alternator back into place, and then I'll show you uh, the tensioner and how that works. Okay, so the bottom bolt here on the alternator is the, the hardest one to do, and that's only because you have to hold the tensioner up out of the way in order to put that bolt in. So your 17 millimeter uh, 12 point socket that you used earlier, to, to uh, loosen up the tension on your idler, or on your uh, tensioner pulley. We're gonna go ahead and put that on here. All right, you pull the tensioner up out of place here. Once you pull the tensioner up out of place, see how I pull the tensioner up out of place here? Now you'll be able to slide your bolt in the hole here. So if you have more than two, uh, two hands, you'll be able to do this. But all I did was lift up the lift up the alternator here and slide my bolt in. And now I can go ahead and tighten my bolt. So these, as I said before, are five sixteenths. I have the socket set up like this: a little three inch adapter or three inch extension, and a deep well five sixteenths. Obviously, I said that was three-eighths before. Let's go ahead and change that out. The bolts are three-eighths 
a 12 or a six point righty tighty is the way to go. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and tighten our bolt in, all while holding the tensioner up out of the way. Just like that. After you get your bolts tight, then you can go ahead and put your idler back on. And then put the belt back on and let off tension on your tensioner. Piece of cake, just like that. Try to do this quickly because you will lose some strength in your arm trying to hold this idler. So we'll just go ahead and get this tightened down. And hopefully you saw that well on camera the whole time I did that. Oh. All right, sweet. Cool. Alternator's back in. Boom. Why is the autofocus not working? There it is. When did we hit that? Okay, so one thing I didn't talk about before is this little guy. This little guy goes on the post of the alternator where your 13 millimeter nut goes on and then this slides on the post. So if you're trying to get your socket on there before you take off this plastic piece, uh, it's not gonna work. <laughs> so go ahead and put this, uh, take this off and then put this on when you're done installing the nut. Piece of cake. All right, guys, there was the video. I hope you guys learned something from that. Um, like I said, it wasn't the best uh, best job at recording it that I could have possibly done. Uh, really hard to get a camera angle in there. Really tried to piece it to the best, to, uh, together the best I could. If you have any comments, like I said, put them in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you guys are into, and we'll see you guys in the next video.